First thing is, there's a guest book on every table. We ask that you sign the guest book. And if you have an opportunity, say a few things about Melvin. I feel Mary and I would greatly appreciate that. Okay? The program. If there's a slight change to the program, uh, we're going to start with the scripture, the Old Testament and the New Testament, which will be done by Pastor Steve Spiller of Greater Galilee Baptist Church in Harper, Illinois. And then we're going to have prayer from Greg Jones. Then we're going to have remarks. We ask that those who speak remember the three Bs. Be brief, be brilliant, and be thoughtful. Then we're going to have the obituary read silently. We're having a few difficult uh, technical difficulties, so I'm hoping to have that ready by the time you get ready to read the obituary. Then we will have the eulogy. And the eulogy will be done by Pastor Jerry Provo of Unity Baptist Church, Gary, Indiana. Then we're going to have a video tribute. At that time, we ask that you give your attention to the back of the room because that's where the presentation will be done. Then we will have blessing of the food. Again, Greg and Jones will be doing that. As we dine, if there's anyone that wants to talk about Mel, um, we ask that you come up and do that when we dine. If weather permits, at 3 o'clock, when this is over, we will be going outside to release lanterns to say our final goodbye to my dear brother. Okay? Okay, at this point, okay, baby girl. What you got? Oh, okay. Every table also has candy dishes. It's a memorabilia. We ask that you take those. We also have a bookmark. And the bookmark on the front is the Lord's Prayer. On the back are some, what is it? What do you think it's called? Fun facts. Things that were priced in 1950 versus things that are priced today. For example, look and see how much gasoline was in 1950. And what is it today? In the center of the table is a cup. This is the lantern. We will be uh, releasing those, like I said, weather permit. Did I get it, girls? All right. Okay. At this point, I'm going to turn the program over to Pastor Popo. Let me greet you in the name that is above all names, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, let me uh, thank the Drake family, the children, the sisters, uh, for doing a marvelous job of doing some creative things I've seen. I really like that guest book on each table and it says that you can make some remarks, some comments, and a whole box. So even though you can't say anything in two minutes, you can take as many minutes as you want to write. And I, I like that idea. I'm going to try using that. So we're going to move on in our service. Uh, understand this is a homeborn celebration. We come to express our love that we were able to share with Pastor Mel and Drake. And we want to celebrate that with the joy of the Lord. Can you hear Right in the house, say amen. 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 We're going to ask Pastor now if he will come, Pastor Spiller, and he will do the old and the new testament. Bless you. Good afternoon. The Old Testament scripture, the 128 Psalms. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord, 
that walketh in his ways, for thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thy house, thy children like olive plants round about the table. Behold, that thus shall the man be blessed that fears the Lord. Amen. That's our Old Testament. Our New Testament scripture is Paul's second epistle to the son of the ministry, Timothy. It's recorded in verse chapter 4, verse 6. For I'm now ready to be offered at the time of my departure at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all and to them also that love his appearing. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. Amen. Oh God, you are merciful, Father, who is from everlasting to everlasting. You are merciful, Father, who knows all of our beginnings and our ends. You, are Lord God, the all wise, all knowing, all seeing God. You, are Lord God, become a merciful Father first, O oh Lord God, and say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, even O oh merciful Father, in the midst of this ceremony. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord God, because you are a merciful God. And we thank you, Lord God, because, O oh, merciful Father, you shared your servant with us, O oh, Lord God, for as long as you did. We thank you, O oh, merciful Father, and we ask, O oh, Lord God, that you would examine us, O oh, Lord God, examine each and every heart. That all that you find, O oh, Lord God, that's not pleasing in your sight, we pray that you would take that and it and cast it forth. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. Help us to understand, O oh Lord God, that even though, O oh merciful Father, we are in memorial to Melvin, Lord God, the service is really, O oh Lord God, in your name. Because, O oh Lord God, we know, O oh merciful Father, that it was you who said that wherever two or three were gathered in your name, we would be in the midst. We know, O oh merciful Father, that your servant, O oh Lord God, was faithful unto death. So we thank you, Lord, because we don't mourn, O oh Lord God, as those who have no hope. We celebrate, O oh Lord God, in the whole going of Melvin Ruth's birth. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done, for that which you're doing right now. Praise, glory, and honor to your name, O oh Lord God, for all that you can do. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you're about to do, and in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Uh, can we loosen up a little bit? Uh, remember, we said we came to celebrate. And as we celebrate Melvin L. Drake, Roosevelt Brethren, what, 1968? I ain't never known 1968 to be quiet. <laughs> I don't know if we have to sing the dear old Roosevelt song. Or, uh, but, uh, at this time, we're going to now, and sister put it so bluntly and so it's truthful. Uh, we're not going to uh, allow you to come and make some expression uh, and remarks at this time. Remember, even two minute limit. Uh, all those that come, why don't we come and start lining up now and uh, we'll start making your comments? All who want to come and make comments. Uh, any ministers will do you last. Do the ministers last. Yeah, let, let's get them all lined up now. That way we don't have to have time waiting on you to come and send the Holy Spirit to urge you all. No, the Holy Spirit is urging you now. Because he said, do the decent man in water. And we're doing the decent in water. Don't be coming and talking about, I just don't compel, I'll compel yourself now. 
then come on up and uh, be ready to meet you. Say amen. Again, one, two, three, four. Uh, anyone else? Last call, and I'm not talking about alcohol. All the ministers that have the one they can watch the conveyance. I need to thank Pastor uh, Stiller and Deacon uh, for scriptures and prayer.
Why are we coming back and forth? As I got home, I let them know I was driving back home. We kept the communication, and I was glad we had that communication. I was not able to speak to my sister. I said, I'm going to be glad to see my uncle present. And I thank God for his life. I remember my grandmother telling me something once that um, Bobby probably don't know. Um, I come from a family of eight. My grandmother told me, we always call Mama Drake. She said, um, you know, I had eight kids too. I said, yeah? She said, yeah. She said, um, your Uncle Melvin, he had a twin. But the twin didn't make it. And Uncle Melvin made it. And um, then um, another moment, which is, um, the trying moment, we came and we and joined um, one of the gatherings that we always come to the family celebration. And my cousin got stacked on the mail. And it was Uncle Melvin, the general was there, who had to take on the duties to take it back to the hospital, staying with him, and making sure that his foot was clean so that uh, you know, he could uh, get back to being his normal life. And then, on another joyful moment, I was going to Georgia with my sister and come down to Uncle Melvin. And I was the one who loved skating. And it surprised me. My uncle said, Look, well, well, I take the skate. I like skating too. So he and I that night, we were skating. And uh, other than that, through me and this older brother, General, I got to play basketball with my uncle General, and I got to skate with Uncle Melvin. And on top of that, uh, that is not the first thing about the world, it's the first way of the second way of the world. But anyway, during that time, for the teenage kids, we like to wear wear chills at that time. And so my mother let me go out to my own shoes. She said, You can wear those shoes to my uncle and general. So I wore my uncle general shoes to my uncle's wedding belt, wearing his wife, like my first day. That was my uncle. I was raised by my uncle and my auntie. My parents worked a lot, and I had to stay with my grandma. The picture that I'm going to say, my cousin just said, yes, I was in the backyard one day, and I stepped on the net. My uncle come went out the house and said, what would you do? I said, I showed him my foot, my foot was bleeding. He wrapped it up, That's what it looks like. and at that time, he didn't have transportation. So he and my uncle sitting at the bus stop, and my foot was bleeding all everywhere. <laughs> I was getting on the bus and I got my lady up on the seat, blood everywhere. My uncle said he's trying to wrap it up and wipe his blood out. But he took me to the hospital and he took care of me. And I always remember he was there when I thought I was about to lose my foot. And I miss my uncle. Thank you. Giving honor to God for me the head of my life and for the pastor's own family. I represent the class of Roosevelt 68. Those of us from 68, please stand. sure that those of us that are on Facebook, that you have a contact with all of us, one of his besties, besties with Murray Williams, and Murray has come here all the way from Georgia, okay? Rose, Melvin was a friend. He not only was a pastor, he was a friend. And to show you the kind of friend he was, I want to name the classmate, but one of our classmates was pregnant. She was in her almost done ninth month. Melvin, Katie Gaffer, took her for a ride, rode down every bumpy road in the back. <laughs> Two hours later, they drove.
dropped off at the hospital, and guess what? Our baby was born two hours later. That's the kind of treated nothing different but family. Love them all. And I hope it continues on and on and on. I had two weeks today, two of my best friends, Sally Powell, Mary Drake. My mom said, how are you going to do it? I said, I'm going to get it done. Went there first, a couple, few hours. I said, now let me make my way there. I am so honored to be here with my best friend today. So she truly loves her family, and she's the baby of the bunch. I know you heard me. 
God said some words to him. Jack said some words. I was at peace with it there because he passed with his children around, holding his hand. I told him I love you. You did a good job as a father. You're great men. We'll carry it on. You did what you were supposed to do. And that was it. So the two thing inspired me to come say something. But uh, I miss him too. You know, we, we would all go over and see him. Mr. Drake, <laughs> you know, come sliding. Whatever, it's my two minutes now. <laughs> All right, so I uh, really don't know what to say in these types of situations, so um, just bear with me, y'all. But I appreciate y'all for coming, and all the things, the great things I hear with my father just warms my heart. And I just really appreciate y'all for showing out for him. He would love this right now, so thank y'all for showing up. Um, the two thing sits with me too, just like my brother. So I'm just gonna tell a brief story. Um, my dad was big on cigars, and uh, the last phone call we had, um, he was telling me, you know, I'm ready to get out of this hospital, and as soon as we get out, we're gonna go to the cigar bar um, and grab a couple of cigars. And, um, that moment didn't come, but you know he's always looking out from beyond, and I really appreciate that. So we were cleaning out his house, uh, decided to just you know go through a few things, and me and my brother were saying that we were gonna get a cigar after, you know, just to honor that. Um, he had one cigar up in his loft, and we called that his last cigar, and you know we're not touching that one. Uh, but as we were going through his things. Uh, we saw his humidor, and you know, we just opened it up just to see if he might have had a cigar in there. Right? But he had two cigars left in the humidor. And, uh, you know, we called that our last cigar. We got a chance to, me and my brother got a chance to smoke them and we put them together with uh, his last cigar. So, you know, I just, you know, just love my dad. I miss him too. Uh, the last few moments were rough, but I'm so glad I got a chance to speak to him. And I know he's in this room with all of us right now, really smiling. So. Thank y'all for coming. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I also want to touch on the whole two situation. Um, prior to my dad passing away, I had never seen 222 on the clock. I've never seen as many twos as I have since my dad has passed. So since his passing, I have caught 222 so much, and just the twos have been coming at me. And I feel like that's his way of kind of dropping in and saying, you know, I'm here. He would always, every time we talk, hey, babe. So every time I catch two, two, two or see something with twos, you know, I feel like that's him saying again, hey, babe, I'm just checking in on you. So those are moments that I appreciate. I also wanted to thank you guys for coming out. Um, if it's one thing, my dad loved his classmates. He loved his family. He loved his friends. So his heart would be very full to see everybody that came out here to support him and celebrate him today. So I just want to thank you guys for coming out, and I appreciate y'all. I love my dad. Miss my dad. Thank you guys again. To tell the story. <clears throat> Anytime we went to my brother's house. There were three things for sure. Three things for sure. Me, Iko, and Nancy would have on coats and blankets. After meeting him, he um, checked all five boxes, and that is his character. That is who you are. And then is your conduct. That's what you do. And your conversation is that's what you say. Your creed, that's what you believe. And your contribution, that's what you give. He checked all five boxes. Um, like clockwork, again, we only met once. He would always send a contribution to uh, the Mount Hope Red Missionary Baptist Church where I pastor at. He was sending it through the mail. We only met one time. You know, I, I got people that I pastor, I can't get to give like that. And I just met the man just once. And he would call me and we would talk. And his favorite, his favorite sermon, as he would relate to me was out of the book of Genesis is, who told you that you was naked? 
and we would, um, as preachers do, pastors do, we would banter back and forth about scriptures. Last sermon we preached, and and all that 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 iron sharpening iron. And so I got to meet him, and his his contribution wasn't just what he gave to the church, but his contribution was what he gave to his family. Amen, amen. If you can you can live a great life, but if you don't leave anything. Uh, you really haven't lived a great life. You lived a selfish life. And so he had great character. He had great conversation. And he had great creed because he believed in the, the only way, the only one that can get you to heaven, and that was Jesus Christ. And so the family is richer because of his love. The family is richer because of his legacy. Amen. doesn't matter how long you live if you don't live long by through what you contribute you just came through and left, and that was it. And so we thank God for um, our path crossing while we could yet talk to each other, while we could yet enjoy each other. So uh, I, I love the man. He loved me, and um, I know the family's going to miss him, but somebody always has to step up and replace. When God removed one out, somebody will always step in. When Moses left, Joshua stepped in, and so – the family have to look from that standpoint. Thank God for Elder Melvin Drake. God bless you. Amen. Thank God for this privilege, and you cannot tell me I'm not related to these folks. Uh, no matter what anyone say, the young man that stepped on the nail, him and I have been friends since we were seventh grade. A couple years ago, we were in seventh grade, and uh, that's how I got to uh, be a part of this family. I started out staying at uh, their older sister's house, Rodney's mother, Mrs. Drew. I uh, spent the night there, stayed there all the time, went out of town, and then I came to Gary, and uh, stay with Grandfather General and Ma's house. I guess that's the house y'all grew up in. I was still little, I didn't really know where I was at. I just know I was gone. And then we, we stayed at General's house, wherever he lived in Sandra, wherever they lived, we stayed. And I stayed at somebody else's house in Indianapolis, but I don't remember whose house it was. It was one of y'all houses. And But I'm saying all this to say, as the young lady said, uh, Mary's friend, how she felt like family. I've only felt like family uh, being around these people. Uh, I know them all, I know the cousins, I know everybody, and I have been blessed, and, and what a privilege when I was asked to just come and be here. And uh, even, even Ed, Ed is uh, Marva's husband, him and I and Melvin went golfing and uh, things like that, and I got some fun memories, but uh, with this family, uh, when I was uh, a teenager and I was cool, Ico used to braid my hair and everything, and uh, amen. That was a long time ago, amen. <laughs> and, but, uh, uh, and, I, I was, and when Melvin got up, uh, uh, I have never met him, but boy, when he got up, uh, he didn't have to tell us whose son he was. All we had to do was see him. He was just like a splitting image of Melvin. And then I got a chance to see the other children because Melvin was mentioning you guys when we would uh, play golf and we would talk sometime. But as time went on, uh, the blessing things that uh, Melvin and I had some intimate conversations as relate to the scripture and relate to what our assignment and what our call was. And he loved uh, talking about how, how privileged we were to do what we do. And so I just wanted to I thank the pastor for letting me say this to have this sacred time. I really didn't have to get up here and say anything because I just think I'm part of the family. I know I'm part of the family. But I appreciate this family. I appreciate Melvin and certainly I, we miss him. I miss General, you know, that was, that was really my, my guy, you know. I miss him and uh, Miss Drew, of course, uh, uh, your older sister who raised me as her son. And uh, I just want to say to you, I'm still in this family and I love you and I, I just love how you have treated me over these years for since I was a child and, uh, and I will ever forget uh, how blessed I am to know this family. And thank you for this time and allow me to say these words. Bless you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I don't, you know, I don't, uh, Melvin uh, was a dear friend and had been a dear friend, not only to me, but to, you know, a lot of other people for a great many years. Um, 
I don't know exactly. I mean, we were elementary school, little league baseball, uh, junior high school, high school. We uh, rode to the prom together in uh, 1967. And I know some of you all said it was really a 1967. Yes, it was really a 1967. <laughs> okay. Um, but I think that, you know, I know that he was very, very most proud of his children. You know, we would talk uh, periodically. Uh, as a matter of fact, the end of last year, I uh, was talking to Melvin and I was telling him, we were, my wife and I were traveling through the South here a couple of years ago and we stopped by uh, Melvin's house. So, uh, let's see, the end of last year, I was talking to him. I said, well, man, you know, I'm thinking about, uh, flying solo after the first of the year. He said, well, come on down, man. I got plenty of room. And I said, yeah, I, I, I know you do, man. We'll see how, you know, because I said, it's, it's, it's cold up here, dude. <laughs> so uh, unfortunately, that never materialized. But uh, that's the kind of congenial, outgoing personality uh, Melvin had. You know, I, I, there are some things I can tell you guys know that uh, in the 60s, uh, Melvin was a James Brown fanatic. <laughs> you probably know. I mean, he could do the James Brown. He could, we would, uh, you know, Marvin can tell you, we were stopped by Melvin's, you know, the house out there, and we'd be in Melvin's room, and he'd have James Brown's album, and James Brown would be blasting, and his mama would be hollering, and Melvin would be. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we had uh, a friendship and a great deal of fun. And uh, seeing him, or all of us, really mature into um, the person that he became, you know, was most gratifying. Uh, we thank uh, we thank God for the people that He puts in our lives, as well as the things that He keeps us from. And I look over there and I see, you know, Sandra, the first, second generation, Mrs. Drake. And, uh, you know, she in general were, you know, two, three years older than we were, so they were kind of like big brothers and big sisters, you know. And uh, I appreciate them, appreciate uh, the guidance, appreciate the way they walked, appreciate the way they talked, appreciate the way they carried themselves, um, you know, and not uh, just in general, you know because they were decent, or are, decent people. You know? So that's um, pretty much all I want to say. Marvin said, uh, what did she say? Be brief, be brilliant, and be gone. <laughs> Same old Marvin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let me thank all, all of you for your remarks and sharing life experiences of our friend and brother who has gone on to be with the Lord, Melvin uh, Drake. Uh, let's give his family a round of applause for this gathering. That <laughs> this gathering that they have put together. Uh, I, I was listening to uh, one of the sisters talking about uh, uh, being in Marshtown Tears and being poor. I, I never knew poor existed in all of our lives because of the way that our parents raised us. And they gave us all kind of possibilities. That there were no heights that we could not reach if we were committed to do so. I want to thank this family for the opportunity and the pleasure of being able to stand before you when there were so many other pastors that you could have chosen uh, to share a few words uh, with you on today. And like most preachers, we always say we won't be long. I promise you, we will not be long. Uh, I, uh, I'm just honored to be here. Uh, I thank God for allowing traveling grace and mercy that all of us were able to arrive here safely. 
And now I want to share a word that God has placed on my heart for the Drake family and friends and classmates. If you would turn briefly with your phones to Revelation chapter 21. Revelations chapter 21. I'm going to read beginning at verse 1 and conclude at verse 7. I would encourage all of you during your time of meditation and prayer that you would read chapter 21 and 22 in its entirety. You will find the following words recorded for our hearing. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the Holy Spirit, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat up on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. He said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him this a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son want to share with you this theme of this discussion, eternity, worlds without end. World without end. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for this celebration of life for Melvin Drake. We thank you, O oh God, for being a loving, merciful, powerful, graceful God, and even in our hour of bereavement, we bow in humble submission. We pray, O oh God, that the words from on high, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would take my thoughts, remove my thoughts, and allow your thoughts to flow through me. Pray, O oh God, that I have no distractions but concentrating only on thee. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We thank you for the life and legacy of Melvin Drake. And now, Lord, speak to me and through me. As we come before the consoler, the comforter, that of the Holy Spirit, Spirit of the living God, fresh upon us. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Let us all together say amen and amen. Too much hair on my arm, got the static I'm getting there. Um, we heard quite a bit about Melvin. I talked about a couple of minutes about him, and I go back to the scriptures. Uh, I've known Melvin Drake practically all my life. I heard some of you when you were mentioning Sandra. Sandra and my sister Marvel were best friends. And whenever Sandra would come to the Propo house and stay till the lights came on, my dad would make my brother.
brothers that I walked Sandra all the way back home. The only girl that I walked home that I never dated. And uh but I I'm I, 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 uh, part of the old neighborhood tradition. Marchtown Terrace, Marchtown Door Middle was all the family in one. Move it up. All right, there we go. I like these tech text buffs, man. They're good. They come in handy. I don't know nothing about tech other than how to spell it. But um um we started as children being creative. They had a little place we call Green Mountain, a little hill, practically sand, trees, and rubbish. Uh, when they tore that hill down, we, we made a baseball diamond uh, out of sand. <laughs> played baseball in the sand, played all kind of sports together. Um, uh, Melvin was good in baseball. And I'm, I'm glad I, when I was reading uh, the comments about your father, I, I didn't remember him in basketball, uh, but I did remember him playing well in other sports. Uh, but from that kinship, we began to, to grow and, and become classmates. I'm a couple of years older than Melvin. And uh, uh, after growing up and going in different directions, we had lost contact with each other. And I would say over the last 10 or 15 years, we got back in touch and began to communicate. If we didn't do it weekly, we did it monthly. Um, and every time that Melvin would come to Gary, I always tell Melvin, I said, Melvin, when you come into Gary, let me know, and I'll put you up to preach. And uh, first time Melvin came, I tried to get him up to preach, and he said, no, I came to hear you. I said, well, Melvin, I really want to hear you. He said, well, the next time I come, I'll preach. And uh, he did that for a few years. Each time he come to Gary, we put him in the pulpit, and he blessed Unity Baptist Church. Uh, one of the pastors just mentioned, uh, even while he was uh, still serving in other capacities, uh, he would send tithes to Unity every month. Every month, I knew the Melvin Drake would put that in the mail. A uh, couple times, I hadn't, we hadn't taken his check to the bank, and he called me. He said, are you still open? I said, yes. He <laughs> said, I noticed y'all got some checks hanging out there. And he said, well, why don't you deposit them? Um, uh, which, uh, if it would have been me, I said, man, if you ain't deposit those checks, I counted that gone already. <laughs> well, Melvin never was like that, but we were so grateful. And not only was he in, in giving in that capacity, but uh, Melvin, would, when he would come to the church, he would look around at the church, and he would call me back later and say, uh, I noticed those symbols on the drums, man. They, they look like a little worn, man. He say, uh, I got this drum set I purchased. He say, I, I want to send it to you. I said, no, nah, man. We'll get he said, no, nah, I already got it. I said, well, how are you going to get it to us? He said, I'll, I'll package it up and send it. Uh, Fed Express. I said, well, let us pay for it. He said, no. Nah. He said, look, don't let me stop blessing you because God will bless me. And all of you who know him, no, he had that kind of giving spirit, constantly giving. Uh, and not just material things, spiritual things some of the pastors shared uh, with us on, on today, uh, that he was that same way spiritual because we got into many of those discussions. Um, and lastly, the last thing I want to say about him at this point is that he was so courageous. Uh, we went to a family reunion of ours in Atlanta, Georgia, and I had called Melvin Drake and let him know we were in town. And, uh, and Melvin uh, said, I said, you want us to pick us up? He said, oh, no, man, I stay too far. He said, I get there. And of course, he called Uber. Now, he was 45 minutes away from where we were. Uh, he had already had uh, uh, his leg amputated by that time. Uh, and I called Ken Pulliam from Gary, who also lived down there, and they came down and joined us. And while we were sitting and talking and having lunch, uh, we ate, waited for Melvin to call Uber. They came back and got him. And it was about almost a few weeks later he called me, and he said, you know, when we were sitting there having lunch, he said, I was hurting so bad. He said, my leg was, was bleeding. And I was in so much pain. 
But all during that time that he sat and had conversations with us, he did not mention pain one time. I say that to say that when God is with you, he's more than the whole world against you. Could it have been that in his spirituality and his relationship with God that he knew that no weapon formed against him shall prosper? Could it be that he believed that all things are possible through Jesus Christ? That's the Melvin Drake I know. What can separate us from the love of God? So I looked, and I only got three pages. They written. That's why I know it won't be long, because when I wrote it, I skipped a line each time. So if it was a typewritten sermon, it would be less than a half a page. But it would be just as powerful as any 20-page sermon. And this is what God has placed on my heart, eternity. I, I know and I believe in all my heart. That Melvin is resting in eternity. I want you to know that eternity does not begin with your death. Eternity begins with your acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. In my discussions with Pastor Melvin Drake, his desire was that his whole family would be saved. Every time he would come to preach, the sisters would come. And he'd ask me to lay hands on them. I said, no, you're going to lay hands on them. He said, no, he said, no you better lay hands on them. So I want to share with you these three pages. And I'll hurry to my seat. Eternity, world without end. The first two chapters of the Bible, the first two chapters of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1 and 2, describe the first heaven and the first earth in the original way it was created. How was it created? Very good. Very good state. Now the last two chapters, the ones I'm encouraging that you read during your quiet moments, the book of Revelations, chapter 21 and 22. The last two chapters describe the new heaven and the new earth. Once again made very good <laughs> by the creator. Now I want you to know in theology they always taught you when you read a scripture, if you didn't understand it, go back and read a scripture before it. And the scripture after it. Well, how do you do that when you read in the beginning? <laughs> There's nothing before it or nothing behind it. There was no argument if he, God existed because God was there all by himself. And there was no one to dispute in the beginning. So he says to us he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. Referring to fresh or renewed, that is the new earth will be the old earth made new again by purging out all the age-long evidence. Purging out, purging out. All of us who are believers in Jesus Christ have been purged mm -hmm. by Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus. Those things when we were headed for condemnation, Jesus, when we accepted him, purged us. All of us gathered here today was once walking in sin, headed for condemnation. But Paul writes in Romans 8 and 1, therefore there is no condemnation in those of us who are in Christ Jesus. What it's saying is that everybody talking about heaven might not be going. And if you're not going, it's nobody's fault but your own. I've done a lot of funerals. Someday somebody's going to be doing that. And everybody calls these home goings. And everybody's saying, I'm going to see you again. 
But I would not be doing my vocation if I didn't tell you that if you'll never get born again, you won't see him again. If you can't say amen, say ouch. Purging all the age-long evidence of sin and the curse, decay, and death. You mentioned some five things here, four things that still exist right now. This evidence of sin, curse, decay, and death. The very element will have been melted and dissolved in fervent heat, according to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 and 12. Then all brought together again by God in a world once again. Furthermore, the new heaven and the new earth will remain before me, saith the Lord. That's in Isaiah chapter 66. Wherein dwelleth righteousness, and the former shall not be remembered. He's saying that when Jesus Christ dies on the cross in our place, when he forgives us for our sins, he doesn't bring them back up again. I notice, son, you know when the enemy is attacking you because they'll say, I remember when. Yeah. Uh, they want to go into your elements of where you were doing wrong, but God stepped in and he turned your whole life around and he threw your sins in the sea of forgiveness and Jesus Christ will never bring them up again. We watched not only Melvin, but all of us who have been transformed by the renewing of our minds, all because of Jesus Christ. This is the principle that, and the biblical principle that Melvin stood on. His conversation, his conversation trying to compel people to come to Christ so that we will be able <laughs> to see him, but more importantly, to see Jesus. Right, it does not yet appear what we shall be, mm -hmm. but when we see him, <laughs> we shall see him as he is. Yes, face <laughs> to face. The former shall not be remembered, nor coming to man will finally be fulfilled. The only entity survivor from the precious word would bring the eternal word of God. No more. No more C. That's S-E-A. Evidently, the will, there will be no need in the eternal earth for this great wide sea. And all the world inhabitants by human beings. There will still be water. However, for the pure river of water of life will flow eternally from them of the Lamb. Uh, that's the living water that you read about when the woman was at the well. And he tells us, if you drink this water that I'm offering you, <laughs> it'll be the living water flowing. And every time that you would see Melvin, he would be flowing living water. I'm a preacher. Y'all ask the preacher to come in. I'm going to preach. Just about done. I'm on page three. I ain't got but one more page left. One more page left. There will also be water above the heavens. The hydraulics and the, metro, and the, and the uh, microbiology of the new earth and its atmosphere's heaven will be in many respects like them, like it was in the Garden of Eden. My God. He goes on to share with us on this last page. There are many people talking about what they're going to do and what it looks like in heaven. People be making remarks about how well someone could cook, and some people believe they're actually frying chicken in heaven. I won't stay long on that because I'm ready for some. <laughs> some who are, are, are avid card players believe that they're going to have bid whist parties 
in, in heaven. People talk like that. People, people actually talk like that. And I had a professor who taught me, he said, all those things they're talking about, you're not going to find them nowhere in the word that that's going on in heaven. And so when you get to the book of Revelations, chapter 21, Paul, I mean John, begins to give us a preview of what heaven looks like. You got a minute? Come on up just a little closer. Because there are 12 gates <laughs> that one can enter when they're in heaven. The streets, they are truly paved with gold. They say where God sits on the throne, there are cherubims, six wings, covering different areas of their body. And all day long, they're saying, holy, holy, holy is the king. There's also Jesus Christ who sits at the right hand of the Father. Verse 4 says, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. What is he wiping away from their eyes? He's wiping away from their eyes the things that will be no more. As I prepare to rush to my seat, he's wiping away sin. He's wiping away the curse. He's wiping away decay. And he's wiping away death. Because death has a death sentence that they have to obey to as well. So on those two 22s that you were proclaiming, that when Melvin was called home, in Matthews they could declare it was a parable when they talked about the rich man and the poor man, but in that they mentioned the guy's name of Lazarus. And, and, and the reason that it's not a parable because parables do not mention pronouns. Glory to his name. And it as I go to my seat, when the death angel came and took the poor man, he took the poor man to the bosom of Abraham. I mean, took, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. When the death angel came, he took the body of the poor man, but his spirit and soul had departed. Well, where did he go? God had dispatched another angel. And that angel came and took him to the bosom of Abraham. On that 22, 2 and 22, on the day that Melvin was called home, the death angel came and claimed his body. But thanks be to God that his soul and spirit was captured <laughs> by another angel departed to take him to glory. Let the church say amen. amen and amen. amen. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Eternal and all wise God, we thank you on this occasion as we celebrate the life and legacy of Melvin Drake and the Drake family. We thank you, O oh God, as we watch his siblings and his to his sons and daughters as they expressed the love of God that was poured into them by their father, by their brother, by their uncle, their grandparents. Thank you, O oh God, for training up the children in the way that they should go. Now, God, we just thank you for this gathering on today as we gather in the sight and witnesses of God to thank him for the life that God had loaned him to all of us, where he impacted our lives and he helped to make a difference. We pray that no one will leave here today who may not have been saved. We pray, O oh God, that they pray and ask God, confession of their mouth, shall confess with their mouth, Thy soul, that God has raised them from the dead.
thou shalt be saved. And if you make that confession with all of your heart and soul, eternity has begun with you like it is with us. And all of God's people together said, I'm done. Thank you very much. He's going to bless the food. He's going to come, Deacon. He's going to come and bless the food. We thank you, Lord God, as we thank you, Lord God, for blessing this assembly. Lord God, as we have gathered together in fellowship for the nurturing of our spirits, we thank you, Lord God, for blessing this food for which we're about to receive for the nourishment of our bodies. This and all of the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. And amen. Thank you. 
do live. I'm not quite sure how long I can stand up. Sometimes. But if the Holy Ghost say, I'll take it off the wood off the day.
realized that some of you probably stopped to grab a meal between services. And I really don't want to preach to the top of your head. You know how we do it. We eat good. I've been telling you that before, and I'm the preacher. When I made too much, and boy, I just, it was hard to pull it on.
the archives. Okay, now. Use the Holy Spirit. Use and preach it. something I preached before. Yes, use the Holy Spirit. Plus, you know I can't read because I can't see. Give me 10 minutes and my eyes start watering. Uh -oh. And I can't see the page in the book. Come on now. Are you heart. sure right. you want me to talk about Reach from your heart. Because that means I'm going to have to study. Reach from your heart. God said, go. Ah. I went on the internet just to see how much an airline ticket was going to cost. <laughs> Wasn't planning on buying no tickets. <laughs> but that day, Right. The ticket was thirty-six dollars. Okay, Mr. Chicago, for seventy-two dollars on a non-stop flight. If you call that out a few days, I've been the first two on the plane. 